Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to have you here with us this afternoon. We've got a couple of subjects to talk about. We're going to begin by talking about COVID. We're going to talk about tiny houses for a minute. And uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about the election again. And then, of course, we're going to take your questions. So um, COVID numbers, 34 cases, new cases yesterday. Uh, that is the, about where it's been running for the last few days. We were as low as 28 one day, and then 33 and 30, and yesterday 34. So still pretty, um, pretty much of a plateau on, on COVID cases. Now going to people uh, hospitalized, uh, this of course is two day old uh, data because that's how long it takes them to accumulate that. 246 people uh, in the hospital two days ago uh, with confirmed COVID, 75 in the ICU and 47 on ventilators. These are, are also pretty steady numbers. Now, uh, two days ago we had 43 people admitted to the hospital and uh, that's, that's higher than, than it, it should be. The day before that, which two days ago was Monday, so day before that on Sunday was 21, 25 on Saturday, 20 on Friday. Uh, it seems that, of course, we do see a little bit of a uh, blip in this, not as many people being admitted on the weekends and then come around to Monday and you get more admissions. That is, uh, that, that's pretty understandable, I think, as maybe people go back to their doctor or seek some care on on a Monday after uh, not feeling well over the weekend and then they end up being admitted so um, that is those are our COVID numbers now <clears throat> on the good news the city has been down under a 5% positivity for the last few weeks and um, so running about 4.7 4.8 that those, that's a pretty good number. Uh, we really don't want to bump up there above five. Uh, and you'll see other, um, other regions around the country and around the state that are way higher than that. And uh, we haven't really, it hasn't gone down a lot, but it has plateaued. So that's, um, that's good news, especially as more and more, uh, more and more people are going back to school and that sort of thing. Still having, within the last month, we still have almost 30% of our new cases are people in their 20s, 20% are people in their 30s. So, uh, you know, that, that hasn't changed for the last six, eight weeks. A um, Couple of other key numbers here, seven day moving average on, here we go, seven day moving average on new hospital admissions is now at um, 34, but we did have 43 yesterday, so that'll push that up a little bit. Um, so our COVID numbers are are not, not moving much. Um, we are getting most of the tests back in, uh, almost everybody gets their test back within five days. That's good, um, because at least we're dealing with data that is that is current data and so as we make decisions that's that's good all right um next thing i want to talk about just for a minute is the election it's four weeks from today hard to believe i we've all been seeing those ads on tv for months and uh, we've got four more weeks of that but i wanted to give you a little report on where the city is in terms of absentee and mail-in ballot. And by the way, you've got until five o'clock today. So what is that, two and a half hours? If you're not registered to vote, you've got till five o'clock today to get registered to vote. Uh, you'll have to do that at this point. You'll have to do that at the election board, which is the corner here of Tucker and Olive, 300 North Tucker. And you can walk in there and register if you haven't. So please do if you'd like to have your vote counted. Um, so far, there have been 3,321 people who have done walk-in absentee voting at the election board. That's been open for about three weeks now. On Monday, uh, our four uh, remote sites will open, and those sites are 
Julia Davis Branch Library, Central Library Downtown, Schlafly Library in the Central West End, and Booter Library on Hampton. So beginning on Monday, you will be able to go there at the hours that the library is open, which they've got variable hours, uh, and walk in and vote electronically. There will be no paper ballot, ballots there, but you will be able to vote electronically. Uh, and then the last thing which is kind of interesting is that so far the election board has received 19,000 requests for either mail-in or absentee ballots. So that's, that's a significantly higher number than we would usually have, and I think we would expect that. Uh, and there are a little over 200,000 registered voters in the city of St. Louis. So our population's a little over 300,000. So two-thirds of that number, 200,000 folks are registered to vote. Um, and and that, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good number of folks that are registered to vote. Four years ago, there were 194,000 people registered to vote. So 6,000 more registered in the city of St. Louis this year than there were four years ago in the, another presidential election. Always more people register to vote in a presidential election year. So that's elections. And then finally, my third topic for the day. Um, you may have seen this on TV. There was a um, news story about it yesterday. It was also in the newspaper. But we're pretty excited about this. And that is that the city of St. Louis is partnered with the Veterans Community Project, and that includes Jason Kander. Some of you may remember him. He was the Secretary of State. He ran for Senate uh, four years ago, I guess it was. And um, so the Veterans Community Project is going to build 50 tiny houses for homeless veterans in St. Louis. The project will be on Aldine, just west of Grand, so very close to the VA hospital. They purchased the property from the city of St. Louis and LRA, actually 31 parcels from LRA and one parcel uh, actually from the city of St. Louis and for some reason that was owned by the comptroller's office. Not unusual, just, so that had to go through the Board of Aldermen process yesterday. So there was a lot of news about this. There will actually, actually be a groundbreaking uh, on this project in about a week but the news hit yesterday because in order for them to, to acquire all the property, one of the parcels had to go through a, a board bill at the Board of Aldermen. But we have been, we are very excited about this partnership. Um, so that, it's about a block and a half from Grand West. Um, we'll, we'll put a link to the, the pictures. That this is a, a project that started in Kansas City, and they ha already have a veterans tiny home project in Kansas City. It is uh, very attractive, very tiny houses, and um, they're in all different colors. It's it's a very um, very inviting and uh, very homey uh, place for homeless veterans. And as I have often said. Um, there's no way for any of us or anyone to get their life back together from a sidewalk. You simply have to have a place, a permanent place, where you know you're going to be every night. And um, this tiny home project will house 50 veterans to begin with. It's actually going to be built in three phases, um, and, and they'll break ground on the first phase next week. But um, it, it will really be a big help to veterans for all the veterans have done for all of us um, and our country. And now to have, uh, be in such a difficult situation, I think it's the least we can do, frankly, uh, for our veterans. So very excited about this project. Really appreciate this, this little stretch, a block and a half stretch is actually coincidentally in three different wards and uh, a large part of it is in the 19th ward which is Alderwoman Marlene Davis. She has helped tremendously with this project. A part of it is in the 18th ward which is Alderman Jesse Todd and he has helped tremendously and a little part of it is in the 4th ward. It just so happens this is where these ward boundaries are coming together. 4th ward and that's Alderwoman Dwen Evans uh, who has also been very supportive. So. A huge shout out and a thank you to the Veterans Community Project. 
to Jason Kander, um, who has, is a, as you all know, I think, who is a veteran, uh, who has seen a need. This is um, privately funded, not a not-profit and private funding. Uh, the city sold them the property at a very nominal value. But I think it is, um, it, it's really terrific. And, and I'm so happy to see that happen. We have, have been working on tiny house projects for a while. I do want to also say that uh, some of this funding did come from the state. And um, it's my understanding that State Senator uh, Jamila Nasheed was also very helpful in that. So, so we thank the Missouri legislature as well for helping to, to fund this. Um, and we'll post a couple of pictures. I, um, it's very exciting. We're, we're happy that we're uh, able to, to partner with these other entities who frankly are, are doing the, the, the biggest amount of the work. And to bring this uh, from Kansas City to St. Louis we're thrilled about it, thrilled at what, um, what it's going to do. So that's, um, that's the good news for, for today. And uh, maybe there are questions? A couple of <clears throat> questions. Um, do you have an update on school going back um, and when SLPS might begin returning to in-person learning? SLPS has not made a final announcement about that yet. I know that they were looking at a date towards the end of October. Uh, but you know what, let's make a note of this and I'll talk to Superintendent Kelvin Adams uh, this afternoon or tomorrow and, and we'll, you know, if, if there's anything new to report, we'll, we'll certainly report that. Uh, you mentioned the 5% positivity rate. Why is that a good benchmark uh, for the city to remain under? So if you look you can all Google this, but if you look around the country, I mean, there are counties, cities that have 20% of the tests being given coming back positive. What the positivity rate means is that 5%, or in our case, I think it's about 4.7 today, uh, percent of the case of the tests given, 5% are coming back positive. And um, that, along with what's called the r not factor, which I have that here. Ours is, I think I have it here. What did I do with this? It's under one, and I'm gonna find it here, see what I did with it, and uh, give it, here we go. So what that means is that for every one case of a COVID positive, you wanna have less than one person who contracts it from that person. And if you do that, if your positivity rate, or if your r not rate is under one, then you know that your case counts should begin going down. Yes, uh, last, I'll give you the two week numbers. Uh, the last 14 days, our uh, reproductive number, or called the r not for people from 20 to 40 has been 0.92. 40 to 60, 0 0.94, uh, 60 and over, 1.09, and 0 to 19, 1.04. So our overall positive uh, positivity factor has has been about one. So that's that's good. You know, it's it's not that that the health department has done anything to make that happen or the mayor's office. You all have, have made that happen by keeping your circles small by wearing your masks, by washing your hands, and by keeping a social distance. Now we've helped with some of that because we, you know, we have a mandatory mask order in place. And of course, um, we have limited occupancy of 50% on bars and restaurants and large venues. When you do that, that helps to spread people out and, and cause less transmission. But you all have done it, you've made it happen, and we just have to stay the course here. Uh, yesterday on the uh, pandemic task force call where which has the heads of all the hospital systems and uh, the doctors leading this effort you know everybody wants to know when there will be a vaccine but nobody really knows the answer to that and so I think the consensus is we have a ways to go uh, before we're going to have a vaccine that is widely available so we have to keep doing these things 
We got a question from Ian about uh, voting. Uh, can you? Uh, we got a question from Ian about uh, voting. Uh, can you go to the Board of Elections and just vote on the spot? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what in-person absentee voting is. Now, you need a reason, like you're going to be out of town, or you may be uh, 65 or over, you may have an underlying health condition, you might be working the polls. You do need a reason, but <clears throat> yes, you can go to 300 North Tucker and vote in person. Uh, Chris's question is also about the election in November. Are you or is the city concerned about voter intimidation this year, voter suppression, and anything specifically we are doing to make people feel comfortable at the polls on November 3rd? <coughs> Excuse me. You know, we never want to have any voter suppression <coughs> or intimidation. And for the most part, we have not had that in St. Louis. And um, the poll workers, the uh, roving election judges, our election board will be keeping a very close eye on that. Um, <clears throat> we know that there, there are concerns out there about that, and therefore we will be out in full force just to make sure that that, that doesn't occur. Um, <clears throat> And it's also why you have a lot of different ways you can vote this year. Uh, Mayor, what is your message to, uh, we've had some questions about small businesses who mm -hmm. are really struggling. What is your message to them? And is there any reconsideration of the 11 o'clock and 50% occupancy? So we, we talk about that at every one of these. As, as you all know, <clears throat> It's something that we are considering <clears throat> when would it be appropriate to remove some of those restrictions. We want to be able to do it at a point in time that we really are confident that we'll be able to let it stick. Uh, as you might know, <clears throat> Illinois, St. Clair County, they still don't even have indoor dining or indoor uh, bar service. Uh, I know that they are trying to get their their uh, positivity rate down to the point where they can the governor will will release that <clears throat> but when you look at what our restrictions are as compared with either illinois or st louis county our restrictions are uh not as as steep as either of those st louis county today i think at five o'clock they are just going from 25 percent occupancy to 50. we have been at 50 all along so we're trying to stay somewhat in sync with these other areas. Um, there's nothing I want to do more than lift all of these restrictions, but um, I don't want to do it in such a way that we cause uh, more people to get sick, that the behavior causes more people to get sick and increases our numbers. So it is definitely something that we, we talk about. I know, uh, I know many of you are talking to your aldermen. Your aldermen are calling me and Dr. Eccles it's really a decision for Dr. Eccles. We have to let the data and the science um, guide us on this. <clears throat> and we have tried to keep uh, our business community just as open as we possibly can. Um, what was my next question? Oh, we did get a question about the improved testing time. You mentioned um, mm -hmm. that most tests are coming back in five days. Right. How is that different from before, and why is that more helpful? Well, the more, it's more helpful because the more recent your data is, the better decisions you can make. A month ago, maybe two months ago now, it was regularly taking a couple of weeks for people to get their test results back and for us to be notified. You want those results back just as soon as possible. And we look back, <clears throat> and we look at this every day, actually, um, no. So, yesterday's numbers, the Tuesday's numbers, where we had 34 new cases, most of those tests were taken, yesterday was the 6th, yes, most of those tests were taken on the 4th. So that's only two days. There were even a few that came back in one day, 
and then eight of them came back were taken on the third <coughs> six on the second so um, it's just it's better data the quicker you get the data the more you can can make a good decision the other thing it is for someone who gets a test they really should quarantine kind of stay home away from other people until they get their test results particularly if they got a test because they have uh, some symptoms so it's just a shorter distance in time the better information the quicker you can get information the better it is we got a question today about jury duty do mm -hmm. you know if the 22nd judicial circuit is um, issuing jury summons for uh, folks <clears throat> they are so last week maybe maybe week before last now uh, I was with a couple of the judges and uh, they were speaking at a neighborhood meeting that was an outdoor socially distanced neighborhood meeting in Holly Hills and uh, at that point in time they had not had any in-person trials yet uh, and but the reason for that is that uh, they thought something was going to go to trial and then it got settled or it got plea bargained or resolved in some other way um, <clears throat> they still are issuing jury notices and on that notice it tells you to call to check to be sure that you need to show up or not they have not had any in-person trials since uh, March, early March, uh, when this all began. But it's likely that you know there will be some within the next couple of months. Um, and so they are still noticing up people for jury duty because they never know if something's going to get settled or not. Um, so that's the, that's the situation there. The remainder of our questions are about tiny houses, Mayor. Okay, good. Uh, what kind of difference do you think this is going to make for uh, homeless veterans in the city of St. Louis, and how did the project come about? <clears throat> well, the project came about as a result of a lot of people's efforts. Uh, and I think I mentioned most of those people before, but LRA, um, the Alder people in that in that area, of course, SLDC but mostly the credit has to go to the tiny house pro or the veterans community project which is the organization that is behind this effort um, now what what kind of a difference is it going to make i think you have to look at this one person at a time if you're a veteran and you are homeless that tiny house is going to make a huge difference for you and ultimately uh, the average length of stay at, in the Kansas City one is 262 days so that's around nine months and uh, within that nine months it's not just about the housing it's also about the support and the social services that come along with that housing in order to help people get back on their feet get employed get medical services whatever it is that they need that's all part of this we talk about it and we call it the tiny house project but it's much more than that and so when you think about well what is the what is the impact um, it's a very personal impact for at least 50 people and then when those people um, get a job move to a permanent apartment move to their own housing uh, because they have their um, their life back together when those pe then then it's a, a a tiny house for the next person so it's not a permanent situation here but I think you know homelessness is a very complex situation um, so we have to just continue to work on that situation one person at a time and 50 um, tiny houses for for veterans is is a great help and a huge impact for those 50 people and then the ones that come after them. Um, so we're excited about it. Uh, a couple of folks have asked, um, do you know with this project, are there volunteer opportunities once it's built? And do they need help actually constructing the tiny houses? So, you know, a, a number of people on social media yesterday when we posted this asked that question. There will be volunteer opportunities, but not right this minute. So please just, you know, uh, hang tight for a minute because there will be volunteer opportunities and, and as there always are and, and let me just say there are many many people in our community uh, through the continuum of care through winter, a winter outreach group there are many many volunteers who help us every day in this area of homelessness it's a very tough problem 
Um, but we got to think about how tough it is on those people who are homeless. So yes, there are opportunities, but with regard to the actual tiny house project, the veterans community project, um, not anything specific for today. That's it today, Mayor. That's it. That's all? Good. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. We've got a beautiful day out there. Have good weather all this week. Uh, enjoy yourselves. And uh, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. <clears throat>